Well, everyone, uh, good afternoon. Um, good morning to some of you overseas. I know there's quite a few people overseas who are joining this lesson today. Uh, welcome to our Bridge Refresher course. Now, this refresher course could be for people who are extremely new to the game, but can also be for people who have played the game for quite a while and they simply want to go back to the, the basic aspects and the, the core agreements or rules that we have around bridge. Now, there's a few very good uh, bridge videos for those who are new to the game about how it's played. If you go to the Australian Bridge Federation website and go to the learning area, you can find these videos. I will send a link to those videos for everyone in the group. and You can choose whether you want to watch that or not. But before we get started today, what I thought it was important to do was to go over some terminology in the game of bridge. Now, this is one of the parts that uh, a lot of people get stuck on. It's always the terminology. When I say, well, the dealer did this or the declarer did that, or that's one of the majors or et cetera, et cetera. People often go, oh, what's he talking about? That's right. And people confuse terms. They confuse terms like dealer and declarer. They confuse terms like, you know, uh, uh, game and, 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 and points and all no trumps and trumps. So what I want to do to start this lesson, lesson off today is to talk or go through some of these terms and bridge and we can always uh, revert back to them and touch on them and go, okay, well, that's what he talk, he's talking about. So let's go through them one by one. An auction. So the bidding is what is referred to as an auction. It's uh, no different to an auction for you know, uh, a car or a house, etc. So the bridge is always played in two parts, as I'm sure all of you are aware. And we have the bidding first, followed by the play. So if we ever refer to the term of auction, that's what we mean. It means the bidding. And it's simply an auction to bid and determine who's going to play a particular contract. Here's another term that's come up here, balanced hand. Now, in the notes, when we go through the notes for today's lesson, I'll talk to you a lot about shape. Now, for me, it's a very important aspect of being comfortable about bridge is knowing all about the shape of your hand. So for example, I've actually brought a deck of cards here myself. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort out my own 13 cards and then show you what I mean by the shape of a hand. And this one's a little bit unusual. Well, we won't use that one, but we can always come back to it. Let's try this one. Here we go. So this here, everyone, would be a typical 13 cards that you'd pick up um, during uh, a session of bridge. Now, what we can see on that hand is it's divided into the four suits. So when I speak about the term of shape, what I really want to know is how are those four suits divided in between each other in, in numbers in your hand? So for example, on this particular hand, what we've got here is we've got in the spade suit, at the end here, I'm sorry, I'm having a bit of trouble with the, There we go. There we are. Everyone. That's better. In the spade suit, we've got three cards. In the diamond suit, I think we've got four cards. The club's one and the heart's five. So just to pop that hand up again, spade's three, heart's five, diamond's uh, four, and club's one. Now that's what I would refer to as a five, four, three, one shape. And this will come up time and time again in lessons. So I'll, I'll talk often about what was the shape of your hand. And you, you would say, well, the shape of the hand was 4432 or 5431. So what that is, is it's, it's how are the 13 cards divided in your hand amongst the four suits? Now, sometimes you may have a suit with no cards. So that shape might be 5440. Why am I stressing this? I'm stressing this because it's a really important aspect of the game to understand shape. Because when we have to determine how we bid on hands, it's often dependent upon the shape of the hand that you have. So let's keep going through the different terms. 
Balanced hand is one of those possible shapes, which we'll come back to later. Bid or bid is part of the auction when it comes to determining the contract. The dealer. Well, the dealer is the first person on a hand who shuffles up the cards and deals them out. Now, if you're playing at home, that's how you would play a game of bridge. If you're playing at the bridge club, what would happen is that we would have what we call these um, duplicate boards and each 13 cards is put into their own home slot. So North picks up 13, East, West, South, they all pick up their own cards. On those particular duplicate boards, the dealer is determined on the actual board. If you're playing bridge at home, the dealer is the person who's shuffling the cards and dealing them out one by one around the table. Let's look at the term of declarer. The declarer everyone is determined after the bidding or at the end of the bidding. It's the person who's won the auction and must play their hand and dummy. Defender, obviously, the opposition, that is the two players who are opposing the declarer. Here's another term here, and this will come up, and it's called discard. That's what you do when you cannot follow suit to the card that is led by either uh, the declarer or the defender, depending on who won that trick. So if declarer has won, won the trick and then decides to lead a club, and if you have no clubs left in your hand, you must make a discard. Okay, doubleton. Doubleton means when you hold two cards in a suit. Now that will come up in today's lesson because we'll start to talk about evaluation of our cards and where you can evaluate your hand and it may depend on something that we call shortage points. Now, something called a dummy. Well, dummy is the person who put their cards out on the table and they're the partner of the declarer. Fit. Well, a fit is when you hold at least eight cards in any given suit between you and your partner. And again, that's an important part of today's lesson because we're going to talk about how we uncover what we call fits or trump fits. Once we uncover one of these fits, eight cards tends to be the minimum number of cards for one of these fits to be eligible, or I shouldn't say eligible, but worthy of becoming a trump suit. Why is that? Well, there's 13 cards in each suit. And to have a good enough majority of those cards, then you need to hold at least eight of them between you and partner. And that is where this language of bidding comes from. We have to try to describe our cards as well as we can in order to be able to determine whether our side has at least eight cards in these suits. Let's keep, it, keep on going here. Forcing bid. Well, that is when you make a call or a bid during the auction that forces partner to bid again. Let me just pop on a little annotation note here, something where I can use my little spotlight. There we go. So, a forcing bid. A forcing bid is a bid where partner's not allowed to pass or say no bid. That means even if they have just the, the minimum of what they've um, uh, uh, promised so far in an option, they must actually call again. Now, a game contract. The game contracts, everyone, are three no trump, four hearts, four spades, those two are the major suits, remember, plus five clubs and five diamonds. Well, what is a game contract? A game contract is the minimum level that you must bid to in order to achieve what we call a bonus score. That is the score that we're adding up at the end of the hand. If you can bid to three no trump, then you need to take nine tricks. How does that work? Well, whatever contract the auction finishes at, yeah, in this instance, let's say three no trump, that is um, the minimum number of, car, of tricks that we need to take on this hand will determine whether you fulfill your contract or you fail. Now, what you do is you simply add six to whatever the level is, and that will tell you the number of tricks. So the game contracts of three no trump means that you need to take nine tricks to fulfill your contract. Four of a major here, four hearts and four spades, 
means that you need to take 10 tricks. And in the minors, clubs and diamonds, you need 11 tricks. Now, high card points. Well, what are high card points all about? This is a way to evaluate the worthiness of your hand or the strength of your hand. And this is what, what will determine whether you bid high or you stay low when uh, choosing to make a call during an auction. And often the best way to determine that is to look at the high card points. Because aces are the top cards and followed by kings, queens and jacks, we give them a descending order of value. And that is an aces four, king three, queen two, jack one. And we add them up across the hand and then we work out uh, how many of these high card points our hand has and that might determine how high you bid during the hand or not or during the auction that is. The major suits, they are spades and hearts. Now for our newer players who are, who are ones who are just learning, you're probably thinking well how do I remember the order of the suits when it comes to the purpose of the bidding? Well the way you remember it is that the, it runs in um, in uh, descending order in reverse alphabetical order. That is, spades are the highest ranking suit, hearts, diamonds, and clubs. So S, H, D, C. So that's the order in which the suits are determined for the purpose of the bidding. Now, no trumps. Well, what's no trumps all about? No trumps is there's two forms of playing a hand. Either at the end of an auction, either the auction will finish in a no trump uh, contract or it will finish in a trump contract. So for example, you may play in four hearts or you may play in three no trump or even less. Now, in both of these situations, if you do play in four hearts, that means hearts is the trump suit or the boss suit. But if you do end up in three no trump, that means that all suits are equal. There's no possibility of coming in and doing what we call trumping in on a suit if you happen to have no cards left. The highest card in no trumps will win. So even if it turns out to be the two of clubs, if that person is on lead and leads the two of clubs and nobody else holds a club in their hand, that's gonna win the trick. So that's what we call no trumps. Let's look at opener because we're about to talk about Opener and responder. The opener. Now that's the first person to bid in an auction. It's not the first person. It's not the dealer, remember. The dealer is the first person who has a chance to bid. Pass or no bid is not considered to be a bid per se. Yeah? An opener is the first person who makes a call. I like to say a call in anger. That is, if a person who is the dealer says no bid, and the next person opens the bidding with one diamond, they are known as our opener. Down here, we're talking about part score. Well, a part score is any contract below the game contracts. That is, if it's not three no trump, it's one no trump and two no trump. If it's not four hearts or four spades, it's two hearts and three hearts, etc. All the way up to four clubs and four diamonds. Raise. This word will come up many times in today's lesson. A raise. What is a raise? A raise simply means to raise the suit that your partner has bid. So if you're my partner and you open the bidding with one heart and the next player in turn says no bid or pass, if I'm the partner of the one heart bidder and I decide to bid two hearts, I'm raising that suit. That means that I'm agreeing with partner suit and I'm raising the level because I believe that that would be a worthy trump fit for our side. So that raise may not just be one level. It may be two levels. It may be a bid that goes one heart, pass, four hearts, still a raise. It may not even be the opener or the responder raising the opener. It may be a case of the opener raising the responder. So if you're my partner and you start the bidding with one club, I might even pop this on the board here. Sorry, Evan. Here we go. 
as our table. North decides to open the bidding with one heart, one diamond, pardon me. East, in turn, says no bid, and I'm south and I bid one heart. If West says no bid, and the bidding comes back to North, now this would be a case of the opener raising the responder. So if North was to bid three hearts here, that would still be a raise. Now, so that means that raises can occur whether you are the responder raising the opener or in turn, the opener raising the responder. Let's move on. Okay, here we go. To rebid. Well, that means a player's second call. Everyone, just a bit of a reminder to turn your cameras off if you would, please. So a rebid, that means a player's second call. We'll discuss a bit more of that tomorrow. We will touch on it today as well. But tomorrow we'll discuss it more in the terms of uh, uh, the value of your hand. Are you a minimum hand? Are you a, a medium hand? Or are you a strong maximum hand? So rebids can occur by either player. If you open the bidding, bidding with one heart, and I was to bid one spade as your partner, and you were to rebid your heart suit, that is to bid two hearts, that would be a rebid. But even if you were to switch suits, if you were to, to actually call two clubs, then that would also be a rebid. And it isn't only the domain of the opener that can rebid, the responder can rebid as well. So I might respond one spade after your one heart opening bid, and then I may choose to bid two spades. So for example, if an auction goes one diamond, no bid, one heart, no bid. And then on the second round, the opener was to bid two clubs. So that's the opener's second call. The next player, that is east, so east, west, north, south. East was to say no bid. And if South was to make a second call or a rebid of two hearts, that would also be a rebid. This one here is the opener's rebid. This one here is the responder's rebid. So let's keep going on with a few more of these terms, and then we'll launch into uh, a little bit about the, the opening, the bidding, and responding. So a sequence, oh, sorry, pardon me, the responder. The responder is the partner of the opening bidder. So if you need 12 points to open, you actually only need six points to respond. Why does the responder need less than the opener? Because the opener has already got more than the fair share of points. And in some respects, the responder is simply riding on the opener's coattails. Let's talk about a sequence. A sequence is a run of touching on a card. So what do I mean by that? Let's say you're heart suit was this, king, queen, jack. They're the cards that you hold in your heart suit. That is what we call a sequence, why? Because they join each other. And it's also a sequence of honor cards. Honor cards are ace, king, queen, jack. Christine's asking a question. In terms of winning points, which is higher, no trumps or a trump fit. Very good question, Christine. So. My aim in these three lessons is to talk to you more about trying to find a trump fit. Yep, and that's going to be the, 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 the crucial part about these three lessons. And that is, let's make sure that we try to find trump fits so that we can earn more tricks. Because if you have a trump fit versus playing in no trumps on a hand, more often than not, you'll find that playing in the trump suit will get you more tricks than playing in no trumps. Now, by the end of these three lessons, we'll start to introduce little bits about the scoring, where we talk about making a crucial decision between whether we bid no trumps or whether we choose a trump fit. So in general, the aim in these lessons is to make sure that we try to find trump fits. Okay, so this uh, sequence of cards here, of honor cards, king, queen, jack, this is what we call an honor sequence. And when it comes to selecting as a defender an opening lead, 
quite often we'll look at selecting the top card in our honor sequence. This will come back time and time again throughout the hands. The reason that we do, uh, we choose the top of the sequence quite often when we make opening leads is because it's twofold. A, you're not leading a low card and allowing a, the declarer to win a low trick. By leading the king here, you're making sure that the only person who can beat you is the one holding the ace. And once the ace is gone, let's say declarer owns the ace, then both your queen and your jack will become winners. Now, you don't need to have three cards to form an honor sequence. Two cards would be sufficient. So if your holding was queen and jack, that is still an honor sequence. If you were to choose as a defender to make an opening lead in one of these honor sequences, you would choose to lead the top card in the sequence. So this will come back time and again throughout these lessons, everyone. The whole idea of honor sequences and why are they relevant? Well, they're relevant for a defender when the defender is choosing to make an opening lead. Let's keep on going. So shortage points. Again, that will come up a bit more in this lesson. And shortage points are when your side has found a trump fit. So, for example, a bit too forceful. Um, when your side has found a trump fit and uh, such as North has started the bidding with one heart, East has said no bid, and South is going to bid two hearts. Well, that two heart bid could be made up of a combination. We're talking when we talk, uh, we're talking about valuating our cards of both high card points plus shortage points. Now, what do we mean by shortage points? Well, I'll start to put some hands up on the board in a second so that we can work out what shortages are all about. Well, shortage points are when you hold both a trump fit with your partner, that is, well, South has decided that North has started off with hearts, promising at least five of them, and South has at least three cards in the heart suit. That means your side has a trump fit. Well, if that's the case, for South to evaluate their cards, they may be including both high card points, that is, aces, kings, queens, and jacks, plus also shortage points. And shortage points can come in the form of, imagine a void. So imagine if you're holding a void and partners, and you're going to raise partner's suit. Well, that void or no cards in any given suit, when we say void down here, holding zero cards in a suit, may be extremely important because if partners holding poor cards in that suit, they can lead those potential losers. And as long as you have trumps in your hand, you could trump in. So that void is actually very valuable for your side, but it's only valuable if you hold a trump fit. So we give that an extra evaluation. And in fact, if you hold one of these voids, you would add an extra five points to your hand. Now that means that a void is essentially more important than an ace. Now, if you hold a singleton, that is one card, and that singleton is right here. If you hold a singleton in a suit and also a trump fit with your partner, you can add an extra three. Okay, let's continue on everyone. A trick, well, we know what a trick is. A trick is one card in turn played by each partner. And trumps, well, trumps is when at the end of the auction, you've decided that uh, this particular suit will be the boss suit on the hand. And that means that if you do have a trump uh, advantage on the hand, it means that you can actually win tricks despite have the opponents holding the superior cards in a side suit. So for example, if spades are trumps and the, partners, the opponents lead off with the ace, king and queen of clubs, well, you might have to follow suit to the ace and the king of clubs. But by the time the queen of clubs is played by your opponents, 
you might discover that you or your dummy hand has no cards left in that suit. That means that you can simply trump in. So that's the advantage of having a trump suit. Okay, let's continue on everyone. And let's talk a little bit about the bidding. And then I'm gonna pop a hand up on the board and we'll start looking at how uh, this opening and responding works. So opening bids. Well, when you come to choose an opening bid on your hand, you actually have to have a bidding system that your side plays. Now, the bidding system that is widely played around the world is something that we call the five card major opening bid system. And in fact, you probably have people who ask you or do ask you regularly, what system do you play? And you simply, your answer to them should be, I play five card majors. What does it mean? It means that if you were to open the bidding with one heart or one spade, then you'd need to have a minimum of five cards in that suit. Now, it doesn't matter if the suit is headed by ace, king, queen, or the seat suit is headed by seven, six, five, four. Yeah, it's not about the high cards in the suit. It's about simply the number of cards in the suit. Okay, so uh, the opening bid system, five or more cards, and uh, the aim for the opener here, or the aim for your side, is to try to find a trump fit between you and partner. So we're going to also talk about aim one, finding the trump fit, and aim two, and that is to try to find a level at which to place the contract. Why? Because we're actually looking for a bonus, a bonus score at the end. And that's what game does for us. It gives us that chance to have a bonus score. Let's continue on here, Evan, and look at a few of the sayings to remember. Now, length before strength. Well, what was that all about? That was exactly what I was talking about before. You would always look at the number of cards in the suit, not the number of high cards in the suit. So it doesn't matter if your suit is headed by the ace king, yeah, it still has the set, uh, length takes precedence over strength. Or if your suit is headed by the jack and the 10, it's the length of the suit that takes precedence. precedence. Higher of fives, lower of fours. That's all about when it comes to opening the bidding or even responding. And we have to choose between, if we've got two five card suits, which one should we bid? The answer is the highest. If we've got two four card suits, which one should we bid? The lowest. Well, when we say the lowest, we really mean the cheapest. If you can't go stay low, what does it mean? It means if, you're, if your side doesn't have the values, that is the, the high card points or the shortage points, and put them all together for your side, if it doesn't reach 25, then our side has no reason to be pushing up any higher than the minimum level that we need to bid at. That will come, we'll, we'll discuss that more and more as we go along. Let's look at points to remember. Points to remember, 25 points for one of these game contracts. That is, if you can work out that your partnership holds at least 25 points, then you should be in a game contract. Six, what is six all about? Well, that would be the minimum number of points for the responder to actually call after their partner has opened the bidding, or that is shift a suit. Here, 10, what's that all about? Well, that's the minimum number of points to shift into a new suit at the two level. We'll, part, we'll come over that, uh, We'll discuss that again in a minute. Here, six to nine, the number of points that you would need to respond one no trump or to raise your partner's suit at the two level. Now, this is all about responder bidding there, everyone. Let's move past these other little few things on points. And what we'll do is we'll change our notes here and then we'll move to the lesson notes. I discussed something with you earlier about hand shapes. That is that each suit has 13 cards and each player has 13 cards. One of the things I want you to do is I want you to get used to looking at the pattern or the shape of your hand. When you pick up a hand, 
Let's try and look at it and say, well, that hand is a 4432. Now, it's important to understand that for the purpose of the bidding. And it's also important to understand that for the purpose of card play as well, Ebram. Because if it turns out that your side has a, let's say, look at this second shape, 4432. Well, if you have four cards and the dummy has four cards, how are the other two suits or the opponents or the defender's cards likely to be splitting? Well, the most likely shape is three in one hand and two in the other. Let's go down here and we can see it's possible that if you have four trumps or four cards in one suit in your hand, that is, let's say um, it's spades, and dummy has four spades, that suit could also be breaking four one in the opponent's hands. What I'm really trying to get through to you here, everyone, is this. Try to think of your, your own 13 cards and then every suit that is played at the table in some sort of pattern. It's important that you think about it during the bidding when looking at your own cards. And it's also important when you think about the play of the cards. That is, when the cards are played at the table and you're looking at one particular suit, we need to think, okay, how is it likely that that suit is uh, falling in the opponent's two hands? We'll, we'll see that more and more when it comes to some hands that we're going to play in a second. Okay, we also look at the three different types of patterns. The first one is the balanced pattern. That is the hand where you have a 4 3 3 3. Another balanced hand is 4 4 3 2. And the third balanced pattern is 5 3 3 2. Now, these hands will be important because we often associate those hands with uh, balanced bidding, and that turns out often to be. Uh, associated with bidding no trumps at some point. Unbalanced hands. That is hands where you've got at least one five card suit and a four card suit, or you've got a singleton, yep, or you've got a six card suit. These are the types of hands that we associate with uh, trumps or trying to find a trump fit with our partner. And then we've got the extreme hands, and they're the hands where you've got two five card suits, yes? Or you've got at least 10 cards in your two longest suits. That is a six card suit and a four card suit. That's what we refer to as extreme patterns. Okay, opening the bidding at the one level. Let's keep this simple. For a lot of the, my intermediate plus players, I tend to teach them a bit more of an intricate method when it comes to choosing whether your hand is good enough to open or not. But for the purpose of our group today, what I'm going to say is this. Anytime it's your chance to bid and you have a chance to open the bidding, if you've got 12 or more points, open it. I don't care what shape you are. I don't care if you've got one four-card suit and three three-card suits. If you've got 11 high-card points, you can also open the bidding, provided you either have one suit with at least six cards or two suits with at least five cards. Now, let's look at choosing an opening bid. Well, we discussed the opening bid system that we play, and that is a five card major opening bid system. Here, you've got five spades, three hearts, three diamonds, and two clubs. You've got the 12 points to open, where you have one long suit, so the decision is straightforward. You simply open one spade. Have a look at example two here. And remember all of these decisions when it comes to opening the bidding need to correspond with the system you play. Once the opening bid has finished everyone, all bids after that point become four card suits. So the only time you ever think about five card majors and what we call better minor is the opening bid. Once that's finished, all bets are off, everything becomes a four card suit. So here, example two, you have two four card suits. They both are minor suits. You could choose to open one club or you could choose to open one diamond. Do you remember the saying uh, from the previous um, uh, examples? 
where we spoke about lowerall forms. Well, this is a case of lowerall forms. You could open one club or you could open one diamond. And somebody's probably saying, but I don't have five cards. Well, that doesn't matter because the system you play is a five card major suit system. But we open what we call the better of our minors. That means it's possible to open up with one club or one diamond with just three cards. Well, in this instance, you've got two four card suits. So you would choose to open the lower of fours, open one club. Let's look at example three here. Well, example three, how many points do you have? 12. So Matt suggested open all 12 ha point hands. Well, we've got two four card suits here, but they're both in the major suits. Well, our system's stopping us from opening either one of those suits because we don't have a minimum of five cards. We've got four spades, four hearts. So we're forced on this hand to choose to open the better of our minor suits. And the better of our minor suits, everyone, here would be the club suit. Why? And why do we say better? We really mean longer. So we've got three clubs and two diamonds. So we would start off with one club. Now, partner will start to bid suits opposite. There's every chance that if you have a trump fit, it will end up being in one of the major suit fits. And this is how you uncover a four, four trump fit. Because if you open this hand one club and your partner responds one heart, you've found your trump fit. We've found our four, four heart fit. If partner bid one diamond, you would now in turn bid one heart. So everyone, I'll show you that. On the example number three, which is what we've got here, example three, e.g. three, then uh, if you were to open this hand, this is you, you would start with one club. This hand says no bid. And your partner was to follow up by bidding uh, one diamond, if this hand was to now pass, you're able to bid one heart. Why is that? Because you're past the opening bid. It was only the opening bid that was shackling you with the necessity to hold five cards. But once that opening bid is gone, or out of the road, one club, every bid after that becomes a four card suit. So how many diamonds is my partner? promising me at least four. So that's how an auction would look on example number three, two of the spitting. Okay, continue on. And let's look at when you've got two five card suits. So what would be the choices we would make if we had two five card suits? Well, how many high card points have you got? Two in hearts, king and queen, five in diamonds, Ace and Jack, five in clubs. Two plus five plus five is 12. So we've got enough to open the bidding. And now we've been dealt two five card suits. One to the King Queen and one to the Ace Jack. Which one should we start with? The higher of the two. What do I mean by higher? We mean the higher ranking. Diamonds outrank clubs. Therefore, we would start by opening one diamond. Have a look at example five here. Again, in high card points, king, queen, and jack in hearts, that's six. Ace and king of diamonds, that's an extra seven. So it's a total of 13 points. We're definitely going to open the bidding. Well, we've got two five card suits confronting us. One is pretty poor, headed by the nine, and one is headed by the king, queen, jack. Well, what was the saying over leaf? The saying was length before strength. So on this hand, we must ignore the high honors in the heart suit. And because we know the rule of higher of fives, then we must start with one spade. Okay, everyone, let me now share some hands on the screen for us. Doing you share. And I've got some hands ready for us to have a look at here and see how an auction would develop. 
So first of all, let's focus on the North Hand. And everyone, by the way, we're learning bridge here on uh, the computer, essentially. Now, nothing can replace playing bridge with cards in your hands. So I hope all of you have a deck of cards. And even though we're learning, um, uh, even though we're learning via the uh, computer or the internet, I think it's important to get comfortable with cards in your hands. So pick up cards, shuffle them, deal them, put them down on the table, and then learn how to pick them up and, and uh, sort them because there's nothing that beats playing bridge with four real people, uh, three other real people, rather than playing bridge on a computer. Brian's asking a question. Where is the length? You mean on the north hand here, Brian? If we were to look at north is our dealer. So everyone, this little table here in the corner is simply the number of the hand or the board, as we like to call it, we're playing. And the D indicates who is the dealer. So in this north hand, uh, the dealer is here. We've got four spades, four diamonds, three hearts, two clubs. Now, try to get into the habit, everyone, of looking at this hand and saying, I am a 4432. It doesn't mean that the, that's the order of the suit, spades, hearts, diamonds, clubs. It's the general pattern of your hand. It is a 4432. Okay, so with a 4432, I have two four card suits. I can't open the bidding with one spade because I don't have five but I would stick with the rule anyway of opening with the lower of fours. Do I have enough points to open? Well, I've got four plus four is eight and king, queen, jack adds up to six. So that's 14. So I'm gonna start off the bidding by opening one diamond on this hand. My partner in turn bids one spade. And that one spade bid over here, let's have a look at the responder's hand. How many high card points do you have? King plus king is one, jack, seven. Seven high card points. How much do you need to respond? Only six. So you can respond. Now, let's have a look at the, uh, the uh, duties of the opener and the responder. It's always the duty of the opener to get the ball rolling on their first bid. The opener's second bid would always tend to show uh, the domain of their hand or the nature of their hand. Either the one thing that takes precedence above all other things is whenever you've got a trump fit, you show it. But sometimes the opener, after a bid from the responder, doesn't have a, 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 a trump fit with partner. Therefore, they would tend to bid the nature of their hand. So the nature of their hand is often uh, based upon the hand shape. And that's why I keep coming back to hand shape or hand pattern. Okay, so the opener, first of all, gets the ball rolling. What is the duty of the responder? Well, the duty of the responder, everyone, is to find a trump fit, because that's what we're aiming to do. Well, how do we do that? We start bidding suits. We only need four cards. Well, lucky for us here, we've got at least five cards in spades. So we respond one spade, and partner will expect what? They will expect four or more spades, six or more points. Well, bingo, North's got a trump fit. We've got four cards and spades to go with partners four. That gets us to the magic, magical eight. So how do we tell partner about a trump fit? We raise the suit. Now, this looks like a pretty minimal hand, and I will discuss this as we go along a bit more at the end of today, and then a lot more tomorrow. We'll talk about how high should we bid? And both the opener and the responder have one of these, uh, what we call mini, midi, maxi tables that tells us how high to bid when, when it comes to raising our partner's suit. So this hand looks like a minimum hand, so we're simply gonna make a minimum bid of two spades. The south hand, does it look terribly exciting? Well, seven points, I've got an extra spade but it's still a very minimum hand, given the fact that six was the minimum I needed. 
Therefore, I don't think game is any possibility. We would need to get to 25, remember, to be able to expect to make game. Yep. So therefore, if I can't go, I stay low. We might make three spades. There's absolutely no benefit in me raising partners two spades to three spades. Why? Because as it turns out, if you play three spades and make the required nine tricks, it's the same score as playing two spades and making one trick more than the eight required. So that is three spades making nine tricks is the same score as two spades making nine tricks. No bonus kicks in until we get to the magical level of game. And that's why we keep pushing game bidding. Now, that doesn't mean that you should push hard on every hand to get a game bonus, not at all. Because in fact, if you, go, if you fail in your contract, you'll get a minus score. So don't go pushing too hard for game every time. What I'm really trying to say to, to you is this, if you can clearly see that game is not on, don't try and risk yourself by going to three spades, because if only eight tricks was on, on this hand, then you'd get a minus score in three spades, but you'd find out if you'd stayed in two, you would have made your contract. Now, two spades becomes the final contract. So let's look at this hand and play it together with our contract being two spades. Now, six to, the level we're playing at plus six means that we need to get at least eight tricks to make our contract. Let's study this lead for a second, everyone. And West has led the queen of clubs. When it comes to making opening leads, opening leads, if an honor card is placed on the table at the opening lead, that promises a sequence headed by that card, which means West has the queen of clubs and most end the jack of clubs. But one card they will not have is they will most certainly not have the king of clubs, everyone. Let's just quickly check the West hand. The West does have the Queen of Clubs and the Jack. So that's why West chose to lead the top of the sequence. Well, let's look at the hand and let's work out how we're going to play this hand. Well, before I even touch a card in Dummy, I really want to um, work out what is our line of play. Well, our line of play on this hand should be when we gain the lead, I want to be able to take away my opponent's low trumps. Now, how many trumps do we have? Well, there's four in dummy and five in my hand. Now, that means five, four. If you were memorizing shapes, then the other two players, those cards will be distributed either two and two, because that's a legitimate pattern, that is 5422. Two. You'll see that in the notes. Or they could be 5431. That means one opponent has three, one opponent has one. They could also be 5440, four, but let's, I don't want to wish that upon you. So let's presume that they're most likely to be 5422 two, or 5431. We're talking about just the spades. Now, Let's continue with this first trick and see if we win the king. Well, no, East pops up with the ace. And East knows instantly that Declarer holds the king. So East doesn't play any more clubs. Now, this is the beauty of having an understanding or a partner that you can trust when they lead the queen of clubs because you know that's the top card and they're denying the king. So we continue on. And West switches to a different suit. Well, I don't think if I play the jack here, I don't think I can win that trick. But I know I most certainly can win with the ace. But that's what we're going to do now. So we're in. So first cab off the rank. In most hands, as uh, uh, one of the, the things you should aim to do at the early stage in a trump contract, and that is to try to draw out the opponent's low trumps. Well, they have the queen, the jack, and the 10, and another card. 
So if the ace and the king, if the ace draws two cards and the king draws two cards, that means that all of the opponent's spades are gone. Well, let's try, let's hope for the best. So let's try that. Start off, we'll play the ace, and we're watching for four cards to drop. One, two. So the queen's dropped. We've still got two cards out against you, and that is the jack and the ten. So we're going to try that now. The ten pops up. Well, we beat it with the king, don't we? But West fails to follow suit. Now, this is where the ability to count patterns helps. You started off with 5-4, which means the opponents have turned out with, turned up with 3 and 1. That means the opponents only have one card left against you, and it's higher than yours. Do you play another spade, or do you switch to a different suit? Happy if anyone can give me um, some input here. Do we play another spade, or do we switch to a different suit? Switch. Good, good suggestion, Joan. Why? Because there's one person out, one play, one card out against you, and it's higher than yours. And Christine's making a suggestion too. Go to diamonds. I think that's a great idea because you can see the diamonds here. We've got king, queen, jack, and ten opposite three small, but you're missing the ace. So by simply playing a diamond here, as soon as the ace is gone, then the other cards will become winning cards. The whole idea in trump contracts is the trump suit is good for your side, but it's also what I like to refer to as a safety net. If you keep leading trumps out, that safety net is gone. That safety net is there for when the opponents gain the lead and they want to lead out their top cards. So I'm going to switch and work on at my second best suit, which looks like diamonds here. So that's what we're going to do. Diamond to the king, and the opponents take it with the ace. Well, those diamonds are now winners. Ace continues on with the queen of hearts which we know will win the trick for the opponents. And then they play another heart because they East here can see that dummy and that dummy's got a baby heart left. East continues with a heart to West King. West now probably in desperation can see there's no hearts and dummy. Yep, the diamonds are high. So they look at the one losing club in dummy. West says, okay, let's try a club. Well, Declara has the king there now. Declara can simply go back to the diamond suit. Enjoy their winning diamonds because you can see they're all winners. Everyone continues to follow suit. Then the, oh, now because uh, the jack of diamonds is a winner, but there's just one trump out. We decide that we're going to give that trump now because the rest of our cards are winners. East takes the winning spade, and that's the end of the hand. We trump in. Yep, the winning four of spades here. And then we continue on with the trump to the nine. And we take eight tricks. Pretty happy with that, and also very happy that we didn't bid to three spades because we would have gone down in our contract. Okay. Everyone, just before we um, focus, on, uh, focus on this next hand, what I want to do is have, a, have a, a look at, I'll go back to our um, share. I'll just share the notes again on our iPad in relation to how you respond on hands when it comes to having a trump fit and not having a trump fit. So here I am as the responder. And we're responding to partner's opening bid. Now, the step one for the responder should be to look for a trump fit. Now, you'll find step two, which happens on the second round of the auction. It's often in responder's um, uh, 
seat or it's their, it's their duty to often place the final contract on the second round of the auction. That can often be the case. So um, they're the two things responder needs to do. The first thing is try to find a trump bid. What are the minimum, minimum to respond? Six points. And res let's look at what do you respond when you have a trump fit with partner? So when you hold a trump fit, then you can reevaluate your cards so that you can count not only high cards, that is aces, kings, queens, and jacks, but you can also add into that something we call shortage points or SP. So HCP is high card points. SP is shortage points. Put them together and that will give the, uh, any hand a total point count. That total point count will determine how high you bid. So let's look at example six here. In example six, partner opens the bidding with one heart, the next player passes, and it's your turn as the responder. So I'll pop that up on the board. This is the hand for you. Partners open the bidding with one heart, the next player passes, and it's your call. Well, how many high card points do you have for starters? You've got king plus king plus king is nine. So high card points, you've got nine. Add to that your shortage points. Well, the shortage point would be any singleton, void, or doubleton in the side suits. Well, you've got at least three cards in all of the side suits. So your shortage point tally is precisely zero. So your total point tally on this hand is nine. Well, if it's nine, then that means that a simple raise, and we'll go over this more tomorrow, a simple raise from the responder would be a raise to two hearts. So that's as high as you're going to bid on this hand. You're simply going to raise to two hearts. Well, let's look at example seven. And example seven, let's just change our tallies here a bit. And we're going to look at the different tallies for the responding hand here, everyone. So this time again, partner opens one heart, where you've got four card support, which means you've got more than an eight card fit. In fact, you've got a nine card fit. How many high card points do you have? Well, the king is three, the queen is two, that's five. The king here is an extra three, that is eight, and the jack is an extra one. So the high card point tally for uh, the responder here is nine. Do you have any shortages in the unbid suits? Well, yes, you do. You have a singleton spade. What do we add on to our hand with a singleton? We add an extra three. So the tally for this hand as the responder is right up to 12. Well, partners open showing 12 points. You've got 12 points here as the responder. You're almost good enough for game, but you can't quite bid game. So what do you do on this hand? Instead of bidding one heart, two hearts, you would bid one heart, three hearts, and saying to partner, partner, come on, I'm almost there. You need something, just a little bit more than your 12 points, and our partnership is good enough. Well, the point range for a three heart bid here is actually about 10 to 12. So a two heart bid, or a, so one of a suit, two of a suit, six to nine, one of a suit, three of a suit, 10 to 12. So that's how we split up the two ranges when it comes to raising our partner's opening bid. Okay, let's continue on here, everyone. And let's look at what would happen though if your side doesn't hold a trump fit. So partner opens the bidding, and not every time are you going to pick up a hand that holds a trump a fit for partner's suit. So therefore what you have to do is you have to start bidding suits of your own. Look at example uh, eight here. Well, here is the criteria. If you're going to shift suits, and when we speak about shifting suits, we mean bidding a different suit. If you're going to shift the suit at the one level, you only need the six points required by responder. But if you're going to shift the suits at the two level, 
you need to hold at least 10 high card points, everyone. Why high card points? Why is he now switching to high card points when he was talking about total points before? Well, total points are only occur when you add high card points and shortage points. Well, what do shortage points rely upon? They rely upon a trump fit. So in essence here, you don't have a trump fit because if you did, you would be raising partner. So in this instance, we can only rely upon uh, high card points in which to assess the, our hand. So you've got in high card points on this particular hand in question, example eight, one in spades, king in jack and hearts, that's an extra four, ace of clubs, that's an extra four, one, four, and four is nine. Even though I've written eight here, well done, Matt. Um, that should be nine, everyone, so please, please draw a little line through those notes there. That should be nine points. Um, now, if you've got only nine points, then you're only uh, eligible to shift suits at the one level. So if you shift suits at the one level, then what would you bid? You've got four hearts and four spades. What are our rules? Our rules are lower of fours. Well, what bid would be lower? One heart or one spade? Of course it would be one heart. So with this particular hand, you should respond one heart. So essentially what you're doing is you're suggesting a suit to be the trump suit. You're looking for a fit with partner. Partner will redefine their hand on their next call. And then you'll have some more information. And that's what bidding's all about. It's like a language. It, 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 you're simply um, calling things and you're trying to find some sort of agreement between partner and yourself as to whether your hands are good enough to find a trump fit or you have enough trumps together. And B, you're also going to finally select a level. And that's what we'll talk more and more about in the next few days. Example nine, on this particular hand here, partner again opens one heart, and you here are the responder. This is a good hand. You've got 12 points. Yeah, which means that there's every chance with a little bit of extra from partner, you'll have enough for game. But the problem we have on this hand is we're not sure which game that we should be bidding. Should we be in hearts? Should we be in no trumps? Or what if partners have got really long clubs? Should we be playing this hand in five clubs? Well, we don't know at this point in time. This is why as the responder, by simply bidding your suit, you are keeping, uh, you are conserving space in order for your partnership to try to find a trump fit. So in this particular hand, we're definitely going to bid one heart. Now, you've got 12 points, and it says up here that you can shift suits at the two level with 10 or more. You can, but if you don't need to, you shouldn't. So, I could bid one heart here. I could bid two hearts, but I want to conserve the space and simply bid one, one heart. Why? Because I want to be, I give partner as much room as they possibly could need to be able to define their hand accurately for me. No reason to jump, simply bid one heart. And you notice here, what's the crucial thing about, about what I've written up here? It says six plus. It doesn't say six to nine. It says six plus points to shift at the one level. Shifting at the two level, 10 plus points. It's the minimum that's crucial, not the maximum. Okay, so an example nine, you simply respond one heart. Let's continue on. There's a few more examples here. Example 10. Partner opens one heart. Yes, you have 12 points. King, king, ace, queen. Three plus three plus six is 12. You may switch suits at the one level or the two level because you've got enough points. Well, you need to bid clubs and hearts outrank clubs. So the minimum number of clubs you can bid is two clubs. 
Do you have the points to respond to clubs? You needed 10 because shifting suits at the two level needs 10. Well, you've got 12, so we've got plenty. Therefore, we respond to clubs. Now, the important part about auctions like this is that partner, especially if you have what you promise, partner is more assured that they can um, rely on you to have the hand that you're showing. One of the most common mistakes I see, even for players who've played for a number of years, is simply by not having what they promise. Day in and day out, I see people bid one heart past two clubs, and they bid two clubs on six or seven points. Well, you can't do that because partner can't trust your bidding. It's important that you, they can trust you because then this language of bidding together means that we can, we can not only look at our hand, we can trust what partner has, and then we can spit out the appropriate um, final contract. Look at example 11. This is another one of those classic hands where partner opens a heart and you've got one plus two is three plus five is eight points. Well, you don't have a trump fit, which means you must shift suits. Well, I'd love to be able to bid two clubs, but if I do, partner's going to think I've got 10 points. I don't have that. So I must restrict myself to shifting at the one level. So what do I do? Well, I could bid one spade because bidding as the responder only requires four cards. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bid one spade because I'm not good enough to bid two clubs. Example 12, similar hand. I've just simply added one more club in here and taken a spade away. Well, that causes us problems because now we no longer have a suit to bid at the one level, but we have to restrict our bidding to the one level. What do we do? Well, we make what I like to call, and you'll see that in the notes that I've, I popped a little flow chart on the next page over here, everyone. And that flow chart goes along the lines of responding to opening bids. And the question it asks is, do I have a trump fit? The answer is, if I do, then I raise my partner. Partner opens a heart, I bid two hearts or three hearts. If the answer is no, I say, do I have enough high card points to bid my longest suit? So if that means shifting at the two level, the answer is I need 10. If that's the case, I do, I bid it, yep. If I don't have enough points to bid my longest suit, yeah, and that is the previous example I gave you. Do I have another suit that I could bid at the one level? If the answer to that is yes, then you bid it. If all of these come down to a no, 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 no situation, you have only one bid that you can make as the responder. And that's why we like to refer to that, everyone, as um, we like to refer to that as the bid of last resort. And that is. If you had a hand like this, you can't bid two clubs. Can you raise partner? No. Do you have enough points to bid your longest suit? Well, I would need to bid two clubs. So that answer is no. Do you have another suit to bid at the one level? The answer is no, because the only other suit available would be spades. So therefore I'm left with one choice only, and that is to respond one no trump. And we refer to that as the bid of last resort. Yep, I, there's nothing else I can do, partner. I have, to, I have to choose that bid because there's no other bid that's available for me. Well, that in a nutshell is how you would respond with and without a trump fit. Let's go back to um, uh, sharing those hands that we've got again. Everyone, we may go a few minutes over time. I hope that's okay for everyone. And let's pop those hands back on the screen. So, how does it work in reality? East opens the bidding, and again, the board two, dealer East. We'll talk about this red and white thing in, a, in, a, in the next few lessons, but I don't want you to worry too much about that. It's something they call vulnerability. 
So on this particular occasion, your partner is east, opens the bidding with one spade. The next player passes, and it's your response. How many high card points do you have? So Brian's just asked a question here. Example 10, why two hearts instead of clubs? Uh, example 10, the correct bid was two clubs. You're the responder on example 10, Brian. So go back, um, have a look at the hand. Um, an example 10, partner opens one heart and you respond to two clubs. We wouldn't be raising hearts because we don't have a fit. Susie's also asked a question. Why wouldn't you have led the Singleton Club in South? Um, I think we might have to go back and look maybe. Was that on the previous example hand, Susie? Just let me know. Okay, here, partners open a spade. I'd love to bid hearts, but if I bid hearts, I need to shift at the two level. What do I need to shift at the two level? Shift suits, I need 10 points. Well, what have I got? Four and four is eight, and one is nine, and two is 11. Well, I've got the points, I only need 10. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bid two hearts. And that is a shift at the two level, promising 10 plus points. Well, north passes, and it comes back to east. Well, east, this is great. You can now, with this east hand, you can now reevaluate your hand. Why? Because you've got a trump fit. So once you've got a trump fit, you not only can count high card points, you also can count shortage points. So let's look at the value of this hand for the East player. East has got three and one is four, high card points and spades. King and queen is an extra five, so that's nine so far. And the ace of clubs is 13. Well, you've also now, courtesy of holding a trump fit with partner in arts, you can count an extra point for each one of your doubletons here. So your total is 13 in high card points, one for a doubleton diamond, one for a doubleton club, which takes us to 15. Now here's where the trust element comes in very, very handily. And that is, do you trust your partner has 10 or more points to shift at the two level? I'm hoping you do. Yeah, I always like to trust my partner. So <laughs> partner's got 10, You've got 15, that's 25. What do we know about 25 total points? We should be in game. So instead of raising two hearts to three hearts, <coughs> pardon me, we raise to four hearts. So we've now got to game and we're after our big bonus. So let's see what South leads on this hand. Oh, sorry, pardon me, North leads on this hand. North leads the king of diamonds. Everyone, before you play any cards from Dummy, it's always a good idea to make a plan. With some hands, the plans may vary. Sometimes it may be a case of you playing uh, a suit other than the trump suit when you gain the lead. But on this particular hand, and that would de depend upon how good are the side suits that you have. So on this particular hand, We've got the ace of diamonds over here, so I think we can win the first trick. And then, when I look at the side suits, I'm really attracted to the spade suit. I've got the queen and another card, opposite king, jack, ten, and two other cards. In fact, once the ace of spades is gone, this spade suit should be able to furnish our side four extra tricks. So that's my plan. But the one thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to uh, lead the opponents with heart cards. I really want to win the Ace of Diamonds early, extract the opponent's hearts, and remember, I've got five, dummies got four. Think of those patterns, five, four. How are the other two hearts, four hearts distributed? Well, they could be two, two. They could be three, one. But in all honesty, I don't mind if they're 2-2 two, two, or 3-1. I'm going to extract them and then instantly 
drive out the ace of spades. So that's my plan. Win the lead, draw the opponent's trumps, drive out the ace of spades. And when I say drive it out, I mean I have to play top cards in order to make them take it. So let's win the first trick with the ace. Continue with the plan. How many hearts are out against you? Four. So let's watch them drop. One's dropped. Two, is, two have dropped. Two more hearts out against us. There's one more. But north is discarded, which means there's one more out, out against you. Do I draw it or not? Richard's asked a very good question here, actually. Um, does responder need five hearts to bid two hearts? Richard, that's the only option, and you're right, where responder does require a five card suit. One spade, two hearts. If responder had bid two clubs or two diamonds, they could have done so on four cards, but not our two hearts. It's the one option where responder's shift to the two level does require a five card suit. Good question. Roslyn's asked a question here. If your doubleton had a king or a queen, can you count the shortage as well? Yes, you can, Roslyn. So if you had a doubleton king or a doubleton queen, no problem about counting the shortage. Okay, we've got one trump out against us. So should we leave it out there or should we draw it? I'm going to draw it, everyone. Draw it. And then I'm going to continue on with my original plan that was to drive out the ace of spades. Well, how do I do that? Should I play? I've got the king, queen, jack, and 10. They are what we refer to as equal cards. Any one of them would be capable of forcing out your opponent's ace. So which one do you tend to play first? You always look, which side has less cards in the suit? West has two spades. East has five. Therefore, you should aim to play the equal card and when I say equal, king, queen, jack, and ten are equal on the shorter side. So which is the shorter side? Here. The queen is equal to the ten or the jack or the king. So we play the queen first. The opponents take the ace. So remember, once they've done that, now your king, queen, jack, and ten are winners. Well, north is now, after leading the king of diamonds, have set up their queen, haven't they? And they can see a singleton diamond in dummy, so North's gonna take that diamond winner. And we can't drop in. Well, North now knows your spades are high. You've got no diamonds in dummy, so North's only choice from here is to play a club. So let's jump on that with the ace. Never and pay close attention to the rest of the cards that I'm playing on the hand, because when we play these spades here, we need to discard once the five of spades is gone. So let's continue with the king of spades winning this trick. And now when we play the jack of spades, we need to discard from the west hand. Well, we're not going to trump it, but we could throw a diamond or we could throw clubs. Which one should we play? Any thoughts? Diamonds or clubs? Which Heart suit should West discard. Clubs? Clubs is right, Joan. Well done. And the reason that's right is because we want to create what we call uneven lengths. So we want to throw away the clubs so that we can do what we call cross trump in the end. So that's what we're aiming to do. We're going to throw clubs away and make uh, the West hand because now the ten of spades is a winner, make that void in clubs, which is what we've done. We've created uneven lengths and we're left with trumps in both hands. Once we've done that, we can, we can do what we call cross trump the hand. So now when we play a spade and we've got three tricks left and three trumps, so we're gonna take all three of those trumps separately. We trump the spade and dummy, and we now lead dummies diamond. And we trump that with the 10 of hearts. And then we enjoy our last trump. And that's a lovely 11 tricks. 
Okay, but let's try and play a hand now and show you how the response of uh, one no trump works. In fact, let me, if you don't mind me going a few minutes over time, everyone. Here we are. We've got the south hand and we open a heart. West passes and we're looking at that north hand. Nine points, good hand. But if I was to bid diamonds, I would need to bid one heart, two diamonds. And that means that I would need 10 plus points because that would be a case of shifting at the two level. Yeah, well, do I have that? No, so I have to keep my bidding at the one level. And I don't have a trump fit with partner to raise that suit. I mean, if, if partner had opened a spade, I would raise to two spades, but, or even three spades when I, once I count the shortage. But when they open a heart, I don't have a trump fit. Therefore, I must restrict my bidding with nine points to the one level. Do I have four cards and spades to respond one spade? No. So all of these options are gone. It's like that flow chart that I've, I've shown you. Can't raise, don't have enough points to bid my best suit, don't have another suit to bid at the four level, therefore bid of last resort, which is one no trump. Now, something that's important to note about this one no trump bid everyone, is that uh, a one no trump response could be, it's just a point count. It's simply saying, I have nothing else to bid here. I, I'm not promising you any type of balanced hand. I'm simply saying, I've got the six points. I need to keep the auction alive, just in case you've got a big hand here, but over there. So I bid one no trump. Now it comes back to South and South says, well, I do have a big hand, but I don't have any other four card suit to bid. I've told you I've got five cards and hearts, and you've told me you don't have a fit. So where are we going to end up on this hand, everyone? Well, let's do our points count. Four, three, two, that's nine. Four in, in hearts, that's up to 13 now. Three in spades, so we're up to 16 now. And four in clubs, so we're up to 20. Well, this was borderline at perhaps starting off with a higher bid. But 20 is about the limit to bidding at the one level. So on this hand, with 20 points, opposite partners promised six to nine or bid of last resort of one no trump, six to nine, then we've got enough points for game. The only possible game would be three no trump. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to bid three no trump. And that becomes our final contract. So let's look at the play. East leads the two of clubs. What would be your plan on this hand, everyone? I know a lot of players love to play off their aces and kings because they know their definite tricks. But that's not what a declarer play is all about, most especially not at no trumps. Yeah? No trumps is being, it's about being relentless. Yeah? It's about always trying to look at, yeah. Um, once we gain the lead, so we're trying to make a decision once we win the club lead with the ace or the king, do, what suit do we play next? Yeah, you have to be, re exactly, Robin's suggesting playing diamonds. You've got to be relentless in no trumps. There is a clear cut principle in no trump play, whether you are a defender or whether you are a declarer. And that is the clear cut principle of playing your longest fit. Even if that means losing tricks, and I'll show you the last hand in a minute on this exact subject. So on the two of clubs lead, um, we're going to win this trick, and then we're going to look at our best longest side suit. Our diamonds look pretty good. We've got the king, queen, jack, and ten, and we've got a total of eight. Five there and three there, that's eight. So we've got eight diamonds, that's our longest fit. Our next longest fit is the seven cards and hearts. And then we go back to a six card and a five card fit. What do I mean by six and five? There's three spades here, there's three spades here. Now I can tell you this about no trump play. Don't play suits early in the hand with six or less cards. Why? Because the opponents have seven or more. 
If they have seven or more, the only person you're helping set up tricks for is one of your opponents. So that's got to be your first step in no trump play. Play your suits with seven or more cards. Well, we've got one with eight here in diamonds, which means that we're going to play that first. But first of all, let's uh, win it, win the first lead. And I think we'll win it with the ace and dummy so that we can retain a couple of what we call entry cards. That is the king of clubs and the king of hearts. I want to retain those entry cards in the weaker hand. South has lots of entry cards. Ace, king, queen of spades. Uh, the problem about calling diamonds over one heart, Brian, is that you would have had to bid two diamonds. And if you respond two diamonds, partner's going to think you've got 10 points. So that's why we can't, we can't bid diamonds immediately. We have to not tell partner a fib on the auction. Try to keep, you know, temp, temper your enthusiasm when it comes to bidding suits. Make sure it's within the parameters of the points that you're showing. So. We're going to win the Ace of Clubs to retain the King of Clubs and the King of Hearts in our hand in case we need to get back to diamonds. Let's continue on. And now we're immediately going to drive out the Ace of Diamonds. Which diamonds do we play? The King, Queen, Jack and Ten are equal. Which one should we play first, everyone? What do we learn about equal cards and card play? Any thoughts? Queen, Jack, Ten or King of Diamonds? King from the shorthand, thank you, Robin. You're going to get a, a gold star in a minute, Robin. That's two right answers in a row. Well done. Ace of diamonds. Well, now your queen, jack, ten of diamonds look like winners. And in fact, if you watch the drop of the cards, I reckon that seven might be a winner too. East plows on with clubs. So we take our king. We then run our diamonds. Jack of diamonds. I hope this is what you all think is a good idea because they're all winners now, those diamonds. The 10 of diamonds will also be a winner. And in fact, nobody else has diamonds left. That means the seven must be a winner. Now, I'm gonna stop at this point in time and I'm gonna to say to you, a number of you, I've spoken to a number of people over the last few days and uh, there's a lot of newer players here that have played 500. And I need you to understand the big difference between, in card play between bridge and 500, is that you have this added advantage in bridge of having a dummy hand. And that's why, until you play in person with the cards, you don't quite understand the full value or benefit of the dummy hand. Now, What's the beauty, beautiful thing about that is that you can see partner's cards, which means that you can count how many cards are available between you and dummy in any given suit. What does that mean? That means count. Make sure you count suits. The, the, the magical number in bridge is 13. 13, it's all about the shape of your hand. It's all about the distribution of the 13 cards in each suit around the table. If you can get your mind thinking about that 13, 13 thing, card play becomes so much easier, it becomes a bit of second nature. So we're continuing on with our seven of diamonds, which we all knew was a winner anyhow. And now we're just going to play our side suit tricks here. Because we're in the second half of the hand. So in the second half of the hand, you can afford to start playing six card suits and shorter. We just simply now want to take our winners. Well, that's what we're going to do. Take our winners. And now we've got the ace and the king of hearts. And let's see if the opponents have kept the right cards. Heart to the ace. Unfortunately, the opponents were too wily. They kept the queen of hearts. But 11 tricks was still a good result wasn't it? Explain side suit. Uh, side suits are only ever relevant to trump hands. So uh, Brian's asked me a question. A side suit means something other than the trump suit. So no trump suit's not important or it's not relevant. 
but in Trump contracts is particularly relevant because that means playing a suit other than the Trump suit. It's a side suit. Now, everyone, one last quick um, hand. And this is, and I, I spoke to you about being relentless. Well, let's look at the auction again. Let's look at the uh, responder. Partners opened one heart, west. North has passed, and it's back to you here as east. You've got six points, seven points, pardon me. Eight points even, if I could count. I did that this morning, everyone, in a lesson. I miscounted my points when I was demonstrating a hand. It was terribly embarrassing. So I'm hoping not to do that more than three times in any given day. So here we go. One heart from west, and it's up to you as east. Go through the flow chart. Do you have a fit for partner? The answer is no. Do you have enough points to bid your best suit? Well, you've got two four card suits here. You've got a total of eight points. If you were to bid one heart, two clubs, or one heart, two diamonds, that would be a shift at the two level. You don't have that, so you can't do that. You must keep the bidding at the one level. Do you have a suit to bid at the one level? Well, you can't bid a three card spade suit because to suggest a suit as trumps after the opening bid has started, everything needs to be at least four cards. Well, none of those th uh, things fit. So what do you do? You make a bid of last resort. What is that bit of last resort? That is what we call a one no trump response. And that is what you would do on this hand. You'd respond one no trump. It goes back to West. Well, West knows that uh, you don't have a trump fit for them because they would have you would have raised them. So and they don't have any other four card suit. They don't have extra cards in hearts. They've only got five, even though that 10 looks like two cards, it's actually one. Um, so this particular hand, you must stay in no trumps because no other fit is apparent. What do you do? Well, you've got 20 points. Your partner's promised you six to nine. That's a total of 26 up to 29. If you've got the magical 25, what do we do? We look for game. Game looks apparent to be no trumps on this hand. That's what we do. We go from one no trump to three no trump. Let me just ask you a quick question. If I was to take away the king of clubs and make it into a smaller club, yep, and, and notwithstanding the opening bit of one heart, then what call would you take with 17 points? Then you might be able to raise one no trump to two no trump, just in case partners got a maximum hand. Anyway, we're in three no trump this time around. <clears throat> and South has led the jack of clubs. Where are we going on this hand, everyone? Well, ace, king, queen of clubs, ace, king, queen of hearts, ace, king of diamonds. That's eight tricks. But the suit that attracts me on this hand is not the ones with the ace, kings, queens in it. It's the one with the length. It's the suit with the seven cards in hearts, the five, two, fit. So what did I speak, say about um, re being relentless? That's what no trumps is about. My plan is win the lead and I've got queen, jack, 10, nine, eight of hearts. I'm gonna drive out the king of hearts. I'm gonna win the lead again. I'm gonna drive out the ace of hearts because once I do that, my last three hearts will be winners. So that's the plan. Let's put it into action. Win the first lead and immediately play a heart. They win the ace, that's fine. We've still got the queen, 10, nine, and eight, and they've only got the king. So they do the same thing. They continue to attack their long suit. That's what I mean about being relentless in no trumps. It's all about attacking your long suits. So they do that. North discards the six of hearts. It's interesting. Doesn't matter because we've only got 
high spot heart, uh, cards left in hearts. We play the queen of hearts, on which they take the king, and then they play a diamond. Well, this looks easy from here, everyone. You've got ace, king, queen of spades. You've got the winning, now the winning 10, 9, 8 of hearts. Why? Because the ace, the king, the queen, and the jack are gone, which makes you 10, 9, and 8 winners. So they're winners, and you've got the ace, king of clubs, of diamonds, and you've got the top club. So that's easy. Win the diamond, take all the hearts. And then top three spades. Sorry, this is a little bit quick, but you can all see the tricks. And then we've got the two winning diamonds, the winning king of diamonds and the winning queen of clubs and dummy. And that's a satisfying 11 tricks. Everyone, I'm going to open up the microphones now because I'm sure there's a lot of questions. Uh, so if you'd give me a second, um, feel free to ask anything. And tomorrow's lesson, we're going to talk about the one no trump opening bid and why that's important, because it gives us a cornerstone to the system that we play. We're also going to, around that, build the blocks of what we call how high to bid, whether you are the opener or the responder. And we use a table, I like to use a table called mini, midi, maxi. And that will tell us how high to bid, whether you are the opener or whether you are the responder, and most especially based on your second call. So let's um, open up the uh, microphones. I think I might stop the recording and say, um, thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that, but I'll keep the microphones open.